skill, the IBM RPA, IBM Robotic Process Automation, which is I think is a quite um, hot solution in the market right now. Um, for the agenda today, I'm going to present you to give you an overview of the solution first, and after that, I'm showing you the demonstration of the product. So in the, in the demonstration, you're going to see how to develop the robotic software script and then how to deploy it, how to run, and how to manage it. Okay, if you look into the research, I think most of the time that we spend on our operation tasks, I think it's more than 50% uh, of work has the potential of the workplace automation. Uh, for example, like the action and the process and the uh, expertise and stakeholder interaction. This kind of task or this kind of work is can be automated with the software robotic. Uh, what if it could be uh, good if we can uh, automate the human activity that they couldn't afford to automate in the past with the IBM robotic process automation. So IBM RPA is kind of the solution that can support the digital workplace concept. If you look at the whole system of work, this is labor, right? So the software robotic is specific for the hand of the human. So it can be help the people to do the job. Uh, our mission is the, to extend the human with the digital labor to enable the business to scale. It's not mean that the software robotic will replace the human task, but it can work together so to the um, to act, to enable the business to scale. If you compare the robot software and the physical or the the physical robot and the software robot, the physical robot is perform repetitive physical tasks. For example, to build a chocolate cake, to build the assemble of of the chocolate. But for the software robot, it performs repetitive software tasks such as log into the system and put in the data from maybe from the Excel from the database and put into the system of record for you instead of the human. This is a description of the software robotic. The uh, robotic software automation or RPA. Uh, it enables the company to easily automate and then the repetitive tasks in order to free up employees from higher value work. So it means to free up employees to the uh, higher uh, value of work. So how does it work? The RPA bot is replicate the action of the human interacting with the uh, application user interface. Because right now, most of the application that we work with is has the GUI. So it means that we can uh, use, IB, uh, use RPA but to replicate the action that we do with the, interact with the GUI. So the good thing is it uh, doesn't need to change any existing interface. And it reduces the swivel chair integration and efficiency execute high volume work because of the bot. Uh, is run faster than a human. So this is a key benefit of the robotic process automation. We have main key, four key uh, benefits of the RPA. The first one is the accelerated time to value. It means that we can create the robot um, easily. I mean, create taste and deliver a new automation in a day, in a week, because we provide a DUI and not just start with the programming, we start with the recording. So it's uh, easier to develop the robot. The second thing is to redu uh, reduce the human error. Because if you let the people do the work, like the copy and paste task, it may have uh, some error to copy the wrong field, based on the wrong field. But for the robotic, uh, process automation is in eliminate uh, copy and place mistake instituted by the solution integration. The third benefit is for the increase the throughput because the robot is fulfill uh, automated tasks in a second or a minute. Normally, it works faster than faster uh, than human two times. Uh, the last. Benefit for the RPA is to, to in decrease the development cost 
this solution is not require the back-end integration. So it means you, you can uh, re replicate the action that you interact with the GUI. You don't uh, need to know what the API is, what the web service is, or the, what the database schema is. So it developed the auto automation quickly with a simple record and playback. This is a RPA use case. Uh, the use case that we can apply RPA into our operation task. The first one is the multiple data source. It means if you have the work that you have to work with multiple systems, such as transfer the data from source A to source B, this one can be the use case that I can apply with the RPA. The view share and the system integration. In case you have to work with the multiple window application, such as you, um, you have to open your inbox in the email and you download the attachment, you open the attachment, you extract the data, and you need to get the data and input into the system. Maybe not just one system or variety of the system. This kind of task we can replace with the uh, software robotic concept. And the system migration in case you have a new system, new system and a system migration. So it doesn't need to require the backend integration. You can use the robot to record your script to transfer the data or work with the new application. The unstructured in the because of the RPA, it can extract the data from PDF, from Excel, from the scan fact, or some email. So you can convert the stuck the structured data. For the pre-checking, I think this one is quite matched on your organization for the auditor because it can automate high volume of checks and it's filter out simple cases and in, it can refer to the user exception. I have one uh, customer who is a Telco customer. They also uh, want to use the RPA to do the pre-checking. Uh, they have a use case for in, uh, use the to get the IMI data input into the system. The IMI data is the, the, the ID of the SIM card, but before they put the, the IMI into the system, they have to verify first number of the digit is correct or not. Normally, they use the people, maybe 10 or 20, to do this kind of task to check it line by line. But you can apply this scenario with PA, so you let the robot check the, the condition for you first and then put it into the system. It's going to make it uh, faster and easier. Okay, this is all use that can we can apply with the RPA. This one is a use case that we apply to specific industry. Uh, for the first one, for the insurance space, we can apply many process with the RPA. I will give you one example for the claim processing. This claim processing, if you submit, if you are user, you are a customer, you submit the claim to the insurance company, the company will let the officer verify your claim um, information. And they need to check to multiple system. For example, then they have to check the customer data in the cell phone, maybe. And then the policy administration system, check the eligibility, check the document in the document management system and also maybe the list management. So you can see that the act with um, multiple system. So with the RPA, so the RPA bot can fetch and collate and sort information from multiple application and put the data in the claim processing app. This is automatically by the robot. Another use case from another industry, for example, in the banking, so banking, they can let use to do the uh, road to do the verification and auditing process, or it can do on the data migration between the application. So it's a variety of the use case we can apply the RPA into the process that we work daily. The third one is the HR and payroll process. Uh, this uh, for the HR or the payroll. Maybe they have to up 
the data in the system of the record in case we have the new employee and HR need to update uh, employee information into the system. This kind of data entry processing, we can use the RPA to do it. The last one is uh, for, for financial space. In financial space, we can apply so many use cases like a POPR, like a sales order processing. Uh, this is it automation enable different tasks for the different needs. It actually in the real world, not all of the tasks we can apply with the robotic software. We still need a human to do some task that cannot fit within the RPA. So we can, uh, actually, uh, for the IBM IPA, we can combine it together. I mean, in the whole process, we support both RPA process and also the human process. This is a sample of the account opening process. We have three milestones to create the account, to um, activate the account, and the last one is to upsell the account. So each milestone, we have own activity. And for each activity, we can uh, define who will do activity. So for this one, the first box is done by the human. But for the uh, orange box, done by RPA. And the, 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 the other is done by the system. This means this mean the whole process. For RPA, we specific on the orange box already, uh, only. So in the IBM RPA, we bundle two solutions together, RPA and the BPM. BPM uh, is a business process manager. Business process manager is provided end-to-end -end process visibility. So you can see the whole process. Start from the human and until some task that can work from the robotic. And BPM can make sure automate RPA task perform when it involves by the process. It means you can define some tasks in your process to let the robot do it. After the robot done the, uh, that activity, it can it work and get the uh, output to the process that need human to work. After that, this is a whole process. You're going to have the dashboard that can see your performance on the work performance and a team performance. And this is the com uh, component of the RPA. They have three main components. The first one is the bot creator. The bot creator is for the super user and for the developer to develop some robot script. And the second component is the control room. Control room is a center line management to manage the bot. So the control room can be the bot repository. So after you create a bot from bot creator, you upload it to, into the control room. You can manage all of the robot in your organization from here. So you can do the bot schedule. I mean, you can schedule how to run the bot. And you can check all the versioning of the robot. You can manage the user and load in here. And the last one is the for the trail. You can see uh, his uh, history and the real-time status of the robot. The last one is the runtime. A component is a bot runner. So after you create, you deploy into the control room. Uh, you can deploy to the you upload to the control room and can you can deploy to the bot runner, and it will uh, pop up the small window on the right corner of the window, and it will uh, access into your system, like the same that human do the job. This is how to uh, create the bot using RPA. So we, we won't start with the programming language. So we start with the recording. So we provide many types of recorder. It depends on the end application. For example, if the end application is a web interface, so we can use web recorder to record the step that we work, such as we open the browser, put in the URL, put in the username, password, and click submit. This all step, the robot can record step by step. It records the object in the page and the data that we put in. But if the end application is not the web interface, we have another type of recorder, such as the smart recorder. Smart recorder can record both web application and uh, client desktop application. 
is uh, it is uh, independent of the screen size and the window location is uh, not fit on the location of the window. After we record the script, so it's going to generate the first script for the robot. After that, we can uh, customize it or edit it by using the command that uh, RPA provide. In, in this uh, bot creator, you can define your local variable. You can put in the if l or loop in the condition in the script, and you can uh, check for the error exception. This is the sample of the task editor that uh, you can use in the RPA. We provide more than 500 commands out of the box that you can select and use. Uh, it's like it depends on your, your work, your application. For example, if you want to work with a PDF, Excel, email, that is a command that you can drag and drop and use in the script. This is a bot learner component. So after we done the configuration on uh, how to create a bot, we deploy bot to, to want, want it to run in the production. So it's going to pop up the screen of the GUI and it works uh, step by step from depend on your recording. And this is uh, your control room. In the control room, it's got, it has a dashboard which you can view the bot activity. And it has a repository manager to manage to upload the bot. And you can have the task schedule to schedule the, to run the bot. And also the operation room to view the control room history and task in both case. So it means you can see both real time and history data uh, status of the robot. And also the user management and the audit trail, which you can uh, see all the control room, control room acti activity. Uh, how to run the bot? We can run from the control room and also we can schedule and run the robot. Uh, we can run it uh, many, many ways. We can run from the trigger also. This is kind of the concept and overview of the RPA solution. So after this, I'm going to show you some demonstration. So I want, want to ask first any question before that. In the demonstration, uh, it's a use case for the data entry. So we have web application, which is a sales lead application. So the scenario is normally we have to let people copy the data from the Excel, from the CSV, and put the data into the sales lead system field by field. But for this use case, I will replace the human task with the software robotic. So we will, I will record the script, how to do the job, and then edit the script. After edit the script, I will deploy, upload it to the control room and deploy it to the bot runner. This is a bot creator screen. We click new. Actually, this is a web interface. We can use the web recorder, but in this uh, demonstration, we use the task editor to start from the scratch. So we can use the command line to open the web browser. We provide the out the box web browser command line. So we use open browser, web browser, open browser. So we double click it and put in the URL of the application. And then save. After this, I save the whole script and let it run to see the first command, command is collect or not. After click run, so the bot runner will pop up the screen, the web browser, and log in uh, and get into the URL. So the next step, we click on the record and select the window, which is just open. And we will put in the username and the password. 
at the moment the recorder will record the input that we input into the system and then click submit We're going to stop the recorder first and then review the script. So it's generate the script for us without the programming. So we can review this, it's just the three steps. Username, password, and the login. So we can remove the line that we not use. So we're going to click save and let run the robot again to see the whole process from the open the browser login. After that, we're going to click the menu. Click the record. Select the window, record it, pop up, and then click leave. And then stop. We have additional line for click the leave. And you can see it captured the uh, image for the bottom that we just clicked. And then after this, we will we will know that we will use the input data from the CSV file. So it has a command to read the data from the CSV. So we just drag that command into the script and uh, config where is the where is the file. Then click save. After this, we're going to record again for the field that we want to input data. So we click the record again, select the browser, and we key in first name, last name, email, job title, and so on, until we click submit. And then click stop and it's going to generate their script for the for each field that we just put the data in so the whole script is the uh, towel the total is towel line so after this we are gonna define for each field that uh, we need to define that which column data from the CSV that we should put in each field for the first line for the first name we know that in the first column is the first name. So we have to eat the script by double click it. That is the set to take com uh, command. So we change it from the static text to the variable. So we can use the file data column variable, which is provided in the software already. And we define that we want to use the column one. And we repeat it until column 11 to match the data from the CSV file and the application. Okay, we done for the 11 column, but for the column yep, is the check the checkbox. So we have to check the data from the column to that is contained two or false. It means two, so we will let the robot check. So we can add the if L condition inside the robot script. So we select if L and variable, and after that we will config variable 
for the uh, column table. If the column table is equal to true, so then check. Column 12 equal to true, and then save. And we will move the action, object cloning action for shape inside the if field. And we will define this is the action to check. Then click submit. This is a step by step of how to create the one of the system of the record. After that, we save and try to run it again to see the whole process of the software robot. We uh, close the previous browser first and click run. So it start from open the browser, log in, and put the data which is now from the Excel from the CSV file. As you see, it's faster than we just copy and trace, copy and trace. And after this, uh, we're going to add some more options such as the message box because of some time after we let the robot input the data for you you have to verify it first so you can insert the message box command and uh, put in the, your description when you run the bot after it finished to fill in the data it's pop up we're going to pop up the message box in the screen after you click OK then it uh, will do the next step and you can put some delay inside your script in case your application is low. You can uh, put the delay. And then you can let call the final step, log out and close the box. So we click let call and then click the username and the log out. Actually, we can close the browser and stop the record. It's going to record how to close the browser, but for this demonstration, it's record only the logout process. But they can use it can use the close browser command from the command panel, and you just insert it. So after logout, it's going to close the application. So after that, we save and we run it again. Start from login, fill in the data, and now you it's going to pop up the message box. It still wait for the user to input. After we click OK, then it's to uh, the step, another step. This is whole process how to develop one bot for do the data entry. As you see, it's just, uh, it's made, uh, it take like a ten minutes to do one bot. So it's not required much on the programming. So it's more on the GUI. If you know how to use the software, so it's quite easy to develop the bot. So after this, uh, we finished and we complete uh, one bot and we start to upload this bot into the control room. So we will upload both script and also the CSV file into the control room. Mm -hmm. And then we log in into the control room with the admin user. can see our script in the 
spot depository in the repository manager. So we see the script which we just upload and also the CSV file. And after this, we go into manage user because in the demo system, we have only two user, admin user and developer user. Developer user previously is used for uh, develop the robot, but right now we will use the developer user to run the bot. So we go to the user management and then change the license from the developer, uh, developer to the runtime license. can verify the role of this user by click on the security and you can verify that this user I mean developer has the right to run the bot inside the folder that we just create and we can select which bot runner that can run with this script So in the demonstration, it's just one server, one bot runner. So we select it. And then we try to log out and then log in again with the developer user. For the different role, you will see the different menu. It's less than the admin role, but you have a light to run your robot. So you can see the uh, robot script that we just upload. And then uh, in, in this portal, we can uh, start to run the bot from here. So select the script first, and then click action and then run. Select the file dependency, which is the CSV file. Select the runner, and then click run. This is how the robot works. Start from the developer portion, and then upload to control room. So you, you can let another one to manage it. Uh, it doesn't need to be the developer to manage all this stuff. And you try to click run, so it's do the same thing that you just run it. So in the real life, it's not run on the same machine. You can deploy it on a different machine, client machine. And the last part is on the how to build a real-time dashboard. So we will log into admin user again, and we go into run the bot again. But for this 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 time, we will uh, have a look on the dashboard. So we're going to see the status of the bot, which is still running. Running. So we we'll run the bot. Do the same thing. Select the dependency file and the client. When we back to monitor onto the dashboard, we will see that there is a task which is uh, still running, mm -hmm. and you see the progress of the task. And right now, for the status, it's waiting for the user input. So it's uh, at the message box step. So we can monitor it from the dashboard. After we click OK at the message box, the status of the robot will, will update. OK, this is whole process how to develop the robot, software robot, how to use it and how to run it.
Okay, any more questions from here? So if there's a new file, you just have to give the location of that dependency. Yes. So what are it about? Um, are they too flexible? Uh, for example, when the template changes, see them change or edit things, things like that, it uh, can just um, automatically update itself or we need to recreate it? Uh, actually, it can mm. caught on the object level. So mm. if the object just changed, the location is not expected onto the, the script. Mm -hmm. But maybe sometimes it changed inside the object parameter. For that one, we don't need to recreate. I mean, don't need to uh, re record again. But you can double click each line and edit some parameter that just change. Mm -hmm. For example, if you have one more field, edit field, mm -hmm. then what she, what we should, do, what should we do? What one more? One more, one more field. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. Then so later on, we decide to add one more field. Yeah. So, so that's what he's asking. Mm -hmm. So then, should we edit the parameters, or should we do the whole thing again? We can make hot just only the additional button mm -hmm. and copy the script and put in the script that we done before. This is something like macro, right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. If you like, like it's cross. Yeah. yeah it, doesn't look like, uh, it doesn't look like uh, um, replacement of. Yeah, uh, uh, because human brain cannot adapt. If the technique changes, we cannot adapt. But this, will, uh, this body is just uh, it it works like with some, some task. Mm. Some task can apply with the RPA, some task cannot. Mm. Uh, the task that repeat, mm. same thing. In yeah. Then we have the pattern, have the condition to do that. Mm. So we can apply with the RPA. Mm. But the task that we don't have the condition. Does it use Watson? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it use for this assessment. Uh, actually, we can work with Watson okay. in case the okay. unstructured data come mm -hmm. and you need some component to verify the unstructured data first. Mm -hmm. So we need the cognitive solution, which is Watson. Mm -hmm. So the board is working with Watson mm -hmm. in the eye. So yeah, I think in that case, probably I did mm -hmm. can provide more flexibility because what we can learn from mm -hmm. the context. Mm -hmm. Is it would it be possible in the future? In the future we will consider to add Watson to make it more capability. Oh, okay. yeah. But for right now it's quite um, static. We need some pattern mm -hmm. to create the bond. Thank you. Any more questions? Do you have any application that is working very well? On financial perspective, like SAP, I saw that you, you work well on SAP, right? <coughs> Sunset, do you work well? Sun? Actually, we, we, we don't uh, tell that we support which application. Actually, we support all because we, the, the way that we. Because you do work on the QE, right? Yeah, yeah. But do you find any application that is very complicated and is not working? For that? We have the plugin. I think that one we that you, you already have a yeah, plugin. Yeah, provide out the box to retrieve the SAP window. But for another case, we have many techniques that to capture to capture the, the window. But uh, it depends. It depends. But mostly it can record. Do you have any experience on MK Insights? That is an audit software. Web application uh, app, uh, applications. Wait, web application. The storage is cloud, but they have a client on the desk. So uh, I haven't uh, have experience specific on that software, mm -hmm. but if it's a web interface or client desktop, it can work with the RPA. It, it has a web interface, of course, because we are interacting with the web interface, but that can, it can be a QL. Don't care what the back end is, yeah. we just interface with oh. the front end. Working on the QE. Yes. Yeah. Have you uh, implemented this in any NGOs? Uh, for the customer, as I know, for the customer in Thailand, yeah. it's more on the insurance and banking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So for my yes. finance. screen 
word is encrypted. You you won't see the real alphabet inside the password field, so it's in encrypted. This platform is uh, compiled with the many security compliance, which bank use or telco use. And actually, we have the credential manager. You don't have to put in every password and user in each report. You can uh, keep it in the single credential manager. And we, when we, when you create a robot, you just call it. So it uh, get the more security on that. So how much it cost? <laughs> <laughs> it cost monthly. It depend. It cost monthly. 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 It uh, it start. Uh, it count by the number of robots. Oh. Number of robots means the control room, the developer? In the bot line. For the, uh, the basic package, it's uh, one bot runner, one control room, and uh, one bot creator. So when you say control room, the administration part is done by a VMO or our son? Uh, the whole thing. We can host this in our server. Yeah. Yes. Actually, the software can install on premise or on cloud. It depends on your infrastructure. But it is not the software as a service. You have to, if you want to use the infrastructure on cloud, you have to buy AWS software separately and then you buy the license and install it on cloud. It's not the software as a service. Okay, any more questions? If after this you have more questions you can contact me and Anjida at th.ibf.com. Thank you very much. Yes. And use this. <laughs>